Back to the mound and through. Perez, it'll be picked up by Manrique behind the mound. And now they're going to charge an air to the pitcher, Melito Perez. Hernandez. <laughs> Can you believe the way this thing started out? That ball just ate Perez up. He looked like a guy with ants in his pants or something when he saw that it was coming back to him. He was jumping around out there, flapping his arms. The ball just went through him. So now Gruber's up with runners first and third. Kelly hitting 302, four homers, 20 runs batted in. The butt has really become a, a big weapon here for the Blue Jays. Pitch low and away, ball one. For years, folks have been saying, why don't they bunt? And for years, managers have been saying, not publicly, because they can't. And now suddenly, the bunters are blossoming all over the place. 1-0 pitch to Gruber. Swing and a miss on what looked like a hard slider. 1-1 one one on the batter. Perez has a fastball and a split-fingered pitch. That probably was what we just saw him throw. The split-fingered fastball acts like a slider. He really fooled Gruber, I know that. One and one on Kelly. He had Nelson Lariano laying the bunt down all over the place. Junior Felix, Tony Fernandez. There's a swing and a bouncer toward third. Here comes the runner. The play will go to first and they get Gruber as Felix comes in to score. Put out 5-3, an RBI for Gruber, number 21. Fernandez to second. He and Freddie Manrique, great friends, talk it over out there at second. Freddie, the second baseman, goes back now to his position. Blue Jays break on top here. Got one in the first inning on Friday night, two in the first inning last night. As a matter of fact, White Sox pitchers have really had the first inning-itis, giving up runs. Pitch is a strike on the outside corner to George Bell. George batting 259, four homers, 20 runs batted in. One of the focal points of that big trade rumor that's now all around baseball Bell to Atlanta, Langston to Toronto, a bevy of young pitchers going to Seattle. Fly ball, hit deep center, Gallagher back, back, back at the edge of the warning track to make the catch. So Bell is gone. Two down for Freddie McGriff as Fernandez stays at second. Mentioned in that deal on the sports wire today, two young pitchers from Atlanta, Smith and Green, and from the Blue Jays side of the ledger, Leiter and Sanchez. But that won't happen for the next 15 days unless somebody goes as a player to be named later because Al Leiter, as you heard, has gone on the disabled list. Sanchez has been called up to the big leagues. Freddie McGriff the batter, and he takes it low, ball one. Freddie batting 301, nine homers and 27 runs batted in. Two down, runner at second. Perez looks back. He works a swing and a miss. There's that split finger job, 1-1 one, one on the batter. One lifetime against the Blue Jays. Melito Perez faced them last year for the first time. 23-year-old Dominican. To the belt. The pitch. Freddie swings and he's popped it foul. Down the left side. Headed toward the seats out of play. Strike two on Fred McGriff. Freddie, two hits including a home run for six at bats in the series. They, 
right. That's a uh, incorrect graphic somebody just flashed up on the uh, monitor here. Freddie has three hits in the series. Here's the pitch. And it bounces away from Karkovice in the dirt. Here is Fernandez. Wide turn at third. It'll be a wild pitch. And Tony had eyes for the plate, but he put the brakes on and will go back to third. That ball came all the way to the uh, backstop and the little low wall that runs along here. Tony thought he might make it home, and John McLaren told him to hold it right there. Let's let Fred have a chance to drive you in. Let's don't gamble on the last out here in this situation. Big Fred with a 2-2 count on him. Here it comes, and it's inside. 3-2 to Fred McGriff. Yeah, Freddie had two hits on Friday night, a single and a home run. He had a single last night. Plus, he had a sacrifice fly. Three and two to McGriff. Perez to the belt, the pitch. A swing and a fly ball left field, not deep. Lions will track it and take it and retire the side. Blue Jays get a run without a hit. It's an unearned run, two errors in the inning. One man is left on. And we move to the home half of the first inning. The White Sox are coming up trailing one to nothing. That's it. For the Blue Jays, Junior Felix will lead off in right field. Ted Henry calls the balls and strikes. He's set to go. Our Zenith home run for the color TV inning will be in the fifth. In the fourth inning, the Blue Jays will bat for Miracle Food Mart in the win inning. Dan Gladden steps in, and for the play-by-play -play on this beautiful Victoria holiday, here's Tom. I'll tell you, beautiful, 21 Celsius, 70 Fahrenheit, west wind, 12 miles per hour. And Dan Gladden, the leadoff man, batting 261. One homer, 15 runs batted in, right-handed hitter. And he takes the first offering in for a strike. Steed has made some early exits from his last two starts, including against uh, Minnesota at the Metrodome. So he hopes to come out here and throw strikes early and get some hitters out. There's a swing and a fly ball into shallow center. Back is Liriano. Backpedaling, and he won't catch it. It'll drop behind him as he fights the high sky and the sun for it. The ball drops in for a base hit. was just backpedaling and changing his navigation out there, trying to get set up under that ball, and it kept going away from him. Plus, he was having trouble picking it up. After it fell to the turf, he looked up through the glasses at the sky and the sun. All right, the batter now is Newman. Now hitting 241, no homer, six runs batted in. And Steve will soft toss over to first base. Hey, I'll tell you what. In the second inning here, we have a little treat for you today. We have a visitor in the booth today. And with all due respect to Bruce Brenner, our engineer, here's the pitch. It's outside. This guy is the world's foremost Toledo Mud Hens fan. We're talking about Klinger from MASH. Jamie Farr is here today. And he's going to sit in and say hello in the second inning. There's a throw to first. Diving back in is Gladden. Infield set for the double play, and they have the outfield arranged around toward left for this left-handed batter. There's a throw. Diving back in. Gladden again. Newman, a switch hitter. Batting from the left side against Steve, the right-hander. David making his 10th start here today. He is 9-12 and 12 lifetime against Minnesota. The 1-0 pitch. Newman shows bunt, and he takes it outside. Ball 2-2-0. Two, two oh. Gladden, Newman, and Puckett, top third of the order. And the big guy, Kirby Puckett, in that trio. 
Throw it over. But the bigger guy, Kent Herbick, as Jerry mentioned, not here. DL, bad shoulder, and they have to miss him. Offensively as well as defensively. The 2-0 pitch, a swing and a foul off, 2-1. year Newman was the best at stealing bases for Minnesota percentage wise 12 of 15 there goes the runner 2-1 pitch and it's chopped foul to the third base side Rick Rennick the third base coach will look it over and toss it to the third base umpire who today is Richie Garcia Looks down. Brindley looks like he is looking into the uh, dugout. See if maybe they want to pitch out here, and time is called. Steve to the belt. And the pitch is outside. Three and two now to Newman. Count is full on the left-handed batter. Runner at first, bucket on deck. No score, nobody out here in the first inning. First at bat for Minnesota. Steve sets. There goes the runner. A swing and a line drive center field. Drops in, base hit. Gladden goes to second. Newman aboard with a base rep. Back-to-back hits now for Minnesota. And Kirby Puckett batting a lusty 340 will be the batter here. Three homers, 20 runs batted in. And in another world in terms of two base hits. 18 of them. Got those little sewing machine kinds of steps when he runs, but he can motor. So Minnesota now might be on the brink of something big here as they try to shell Steve early. Two aboard on two hits. Nobody out. Pitch to Puckett, a swing and a foul back. Kirby has hit safely in five straight games. Runners first and second. Brilliant sunshine here this afternoon. Glistening on those Minnesota batting helmets. Twins in their gray road uniforms. A pitch to Kirby, a swing and a miss on a good slider. 0-2 oh on the batter. Really cool pocket on that swing. And came right off the bat. So now Puckett's in the hole. Nothing in two against right-hander Dave Steve. The pitch, curveball. Hit to center field. Going back, Mosby. Still going back. Still going back. At the warning track, he'll haul it in. The runner at second, Gladden, will tag and come to third. And at first base, Al Newman is really upset with himself. He thought that he should have come back, tagged, and gone to second. He was really upset when that ball came in. You saw him with his fists clenched and the gesture saying, doggone it, I could have picked up 90 feet right there. Bucket gave that ball a ride. So with Newman staying at first, it's a break for the Blue Jays in that it keeps the double play in order. And with Randy Bush up there, if Steve could induce him to hit the ball on the ground, they could get out of here without Minnesota doing some serious first inning damage. Steve plants that right foot on the rubber, looks down to Brindley for the sign. 
turns and fires to first, and Newman is back safely. Gladden at third. Fly ball will score him. Here's it. And it's high for a ball. 1-0 on Randy Bush. 239 hitter, four homers, 19 runs batted in. When we reflect back on memories and we close out this chapter of Blue Jays baseball here in this park next Sunday, this man will always be etched in our memories. He swings and he pulls one down the line, but foul. It was Randy Bush who broke up Jim Clancy's bid for a perfect game in this ballpark a few years back. Still see Damaso Garcia hightailing it toward the outfield, stretching, trying to get the glove on it. Ninth inning leadoff single, September 28, 1982. Throw it over. And the next day, one of the clever headlines, I believe, the Toronto Sun said it with one word, bushwhack. Randy did it. Left-handed hitter. Steve with a 1-1 count on him. Looks down to Brindley. Runners at first and third. The pitch. And a bouncer to second. Might be two. Go to Tony for one. Over to first. In time double play. Yes, sir. David got just what he needed when he needed it. A 4-6-3 double play. And Minnesota is dead in the water here in the top of the first inning. Blue Jays coming up with no score. Umpire Terry Cooney is behind catcher Rich Gedman. By play, here's Tom. Thank you, Jerry, and hello again, everybody. The big six-foot eighter, 34 years old from Centerville, Tennessee. Winds are up, and here's your first pitch. Inside to Felix, he has to wheel away from it. Ball one to Junior. Temperature at game time, 81 degrees. Starting time, 108. 108 Eastern, 81 degrees in Beantown. There's another pitch inside. Now, Smithson is a sinker ball slider pitcher. So he has worked Felix inside with the first two offerings. He could fire that sinker ball at him right here. Here's the 2 1, the 2 0, and there's a swing and a miss. And it's uh, now 2 and 1 on the batter, Felix. Young man right here turning some heads off ties for the weekend. 444 hitter against the. Red Sox, he swings and he misses two and two. Driving those runners in, batting 666 with men in scoring position. Junior Felix. Smithson works and there's a swing and a miss as he got him with the sinker. Felix strikes out. And that'll bring Tony Fernandez to the plate. Tony is six for his last 43 at bats. Hitting only 213. Suffice to say, not a happy camper. Tony, three homers, 19 runs batted in, and they pitch his inside ball one. Tony is a very complex individual to begin with, and he tends to be moody, and he has not been in the best frame of mind here of late. Breaking ball in for a strike. One and one now to Tony Fernandez. Now Tony calls time, and he steps out. If you're a ball, ball player and you're a hitter and you're supposed to be a good one, as he is, and you're not doing it, pitches outside two and one. Understandably, you're not going outside three and one. Guys have been known to do some strange things to try and break slumps. Here it comes. There's a swing and a miss, and it's 3-2 on Fernandez.
This one on the payoff, a swing and a miss, and he strikes out Fernandez. So Tony is gone. It's back-to-back -back strikeouts for the Boston right-hander, and that'll bring Kelly Gruber to the plate. Kelly, on the other hand, has been hitting the ball with uh, pretty good results. He's 11 for his last 36 at the plate, hitting 287 for the season. And he takes inside ball one. The pitch, a swing and a foul back, and that's just up over our heads. One ball, one strike. Two batters up, two batters down on strikeouts. Smithson delivers, and he misses outside. Two balls and a strike now on Gruber. Here it comes, and a swing and a line drive into left field. Down into the corner, cut off by Greenwell. That'll be a base hit for Kelly Gruber. A two-out single to keep the inning going and bring George Bell to the plate. Bell hitting 258, seven homers, and 30 runs batted in. With his home run yesterday, Mosby stroked his career 12th against Boston, breaking a tie for the moment with George Bell. Now Smithson steps off and he looks Gruber back to the bag at first. Smithson sets. And the pitch. And it's up and in. 1-0. Down the way from us, fellow who was here for the impossible dream year of 67. One of the key players in that championship season, as a matter of fact. Tall, good-looking right-hander, now Dr. Jim Lonborg. In here filling in as a telecaster today. There's a popper out to second. Chased by Romero onto the outfield grass. He's under it. He'll take it and retire the side. No runs a hit. One man is left. With a game that is two hours and six minutes old, we move to the bottom of the seventh inning here in Cleveland on Tuesday. The game tied at four. The Blue Jays have their own Tuesday coming up, brought to you by Maxwell House Coffee. That's Sunday, September 17th. The Indians in town. Three Blue Jays took for the first 20,000 fans and all youngsters 14 and under. The game, of course, is a sellout. We hope you have your tickets. And enjoy Tooth Day. Compliments of Maxwell House, Sunday, September 17. Dave Steeb to face the top of the order. Pesky leadoff hitter Jerry Brown has singled, flied out, and been hit by a pitch. And each time he's been on, he has come back to score. Switch hitter batting left-handed. Hits a ground ball. Two hops to second base. Loved by Liriano. Flips to McGriff for the out. Tommy Henzo coming up with Deion James on deck. Baltimore did not score in the top of the second, so, so through one and a half at Texas. The Rangers six, Baltimore one. Henzo, two sacrifice bunts each time to set up Brown coming in to score. And he's also grounded out to the mound. He takes a strike called. Tommy officially 0 for 1 has set up two runs, but gave two back on his wild throw in the four-run second inning. It led to two unearned runs. He swings, and he misses strike two, 0-2. David Wells, the left-hander. Jim Acker, the right-hander. Busy again, and the Jays left the old 10. Kelly Gruber crowds in at third. He's on the lip of the grass. Into a good bunner. 
Strike two pitch, swing and a miss. Steve struck him out. Five strikeouts for Steve. He makes quick work of Henzo. Through five at Kansas City, Minnesota three. The Royals nothing. The rookie Tom Gordon pitching for the Royals. He is 16 and six. But Randy Bush hit a home run off in his 13th. The Twins on the road. They're home Tuesday night to host the Blue Jays. Deion James takes outside ball one. What a day. An RBI single to right center in the first. A home run to right with nobody on in the third. A two-run single to right center in the fifth. He's done it all. Steve in with a strike at the knees. One and one. Left-handed hitter. He's been pulling today off Steve. Who kicks, deals, and a fastball is kept outside. Two and one. Through seven at Montreal. Pittsburgh. That is Philadelphia three. Montreal one. Hubie Brooks, 11th home run. Accounting for the only Montreal run. But the Phils with three to lead three to one through seven. James takes it low, three and one. Pasquale Perez started for the Expos with a record of eight and 12. John Candelaria picked him up in the seventh. And it's the Philadelphia Phils batting in the top of the eighth. Up by a pair. 3-1 offering. Inside, ball four. Deion James stays perfect today. Batting in the fourth position. The left field. That is Steve's first walk. He's hit a pair. And he kicks the dirt in anger as Cito Gaston, the manager, comes walking out from the third base dugout. Steve slams down the rosin bag, kicks some more dirt. Fires the ball into his glove. And he just may be missed enough at umpire Ted Hendry that he feels that Hendry might be responsible for his exit. Cito has had his say he is going to go with Steve. Hendry had come out to break up the conversation, but he is walking back to the plate now as Joe Carter steps in. A 4-4 tie here in the Cleveland 7. Two down. Through seven at Shea Stadium in New York. Pittsburgh two, the Mets one. At the end of five in Cincinnati, the Reds three, the Braves two. Steve looks at his runner at first, comes into Carter at the fastball high, ball one. At Wrigley Field, the Cubs are batting in the bottom of the fifth, trailing St. Louis one to nothing. The rookie Ken Hill with a shutout. The Cubs lead the cards by a game and a half. Carter pokes it foul over his own first base dugout. Back into the empty red seat. One and one on Joe. He is 0 for 3. Robbed of a hit in the first inning. Shot one on a low line and a diving Kelly Gruber. Between third and short, speared it on a hop and threw to second from his knees for the force out on Deion James. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fly ball driven to deep left center. Mosby goes back. It's playable at the track. He makes the catch. And the inning is over. No runs. A walk. One man left on. We've played seven complete here in Cleveland. The Blue Bottom of the eighth inning here at the Sky Dome. The Blue Jays won. The Indians won. Before a record-setting crowd when it's all said and done. Today's crowd, 49,501, 49,501. The Blue Jays have just broken the American League attendance record set last year by Minnesota at 3,028,000 fans. Here's Mookie Wilson against left-hander Bud Black, whose fastball is high, ball one. The Blue Jays now for the season have drawn 3,078,413, the brand new AL mark. Mookie takes a strike and it's one and one. The Blue Jays leadoff hitter, one for three. Single to right his last time up. He hits a ground ball between third and short. Base hit left field. Mookie has done it again. Right-hander Steve Olin. Left-hander Jesse Orozco. Working hurriedly in the Indians' right field bullpen. 
Meanwhile, the Orioles are coming up now in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Royals have just delivered a five-run broadside and lead Baltimore seven to nothing. They've outhit the Orioles eleven to one. The Blue Jays leading Baltimore by a game and a half. Coming into play today. Here's Tom Lawless. He turns the bunt and fouls it back over the net into the crowd. Lawless walked, stole a base in the first inning, popped a short in the fourth, and after Mookie's leadoff single to right in the sixth, artfully bunted him along. But Tom up here again asked to use all of his wit and guile to advance Mookie to second base. Black the stretch. Lawless turns to bunt and takes outside. One and one. The Orioles trail the Blue Jays by two in the loss column. The Blue Jays have dropped 67. Baltimore 69. And the Royals just set down Baltimore. One, two, three in the sixth inning. Lawless turns to bunt. Takes a strike on the outside corner. It's one and two. Through six complete now at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Royals seven, Orioles nothing. Lawless a pretty good bunter. We'll see if he might try and bunt with two strikes. He's not. He swings and he fouls it off the mask of catcher Joel Skinner. As the ball ends up near the backstop, George Bell picks it up. It's a nice hand from the patrons behind the net. Bottom of the eighth inning here, one to one the score. The Blue Jays trying to force the issue going to the ninth. Mookie the lead at first, and he draws a throw. Again, black set. Around with the left arm. Change up, loop to right, dropping, dropping, base hit. Mookie stops at second. The Blue Jays have two on. That was a very nice job by Tommy Lawless. That pitch was way outside, and Tommy just got the bat out there and got it right off the end of it. Just flared it over the second baseman's head. Henzo did a nice job trying to deke Wilson, but Mookie said, I saw that back on the sandlots in South Carolina. Watch me go. That'll bring John Hart out, too. Tom, you know, this, uh, this year, this summer, a lot of people have called in to Bob McCowan's show, Jay's Talk, and they've said, why Tom Lawless? Well, here's a perfect reason why Tom Lawless. It's September, the stretch drive. Kelly Gruber has the sore right hand, and Lawless has been as valuable in his role as any starter out there. Well, that's the, uh, the whole ball of wax right there, and when you get into a situation where you have the manpower to win something in, in baseball, it's 24 integral parts. It is a role player's sport, and Tommy Lawless uh, is as fundamentally sound, I think, as anybody we have ever had on this ball club. He can do a lot of things, and for a while, he was just the designated base stealer, if you will, and he did that flawlessly, 10 for 10 at one point. Finally, they caught him on what he thought might be a balk move, but uh, today he's laid down the bunt right there. He handles the pitch that's way outside, gets the job done, and drives Buddy Black out of the game. The right-hander Olin is coming on to work here. We are in the eighth inning. The Blue Jays trying to break a one-to-one -one tie, and with a pause in the action, we'll be back after this. Suspension guaranteed. Your muffler guaranteed. And now your constant velocity joints and all steering parts are also guaranteed. Your Auto Pro dealer, the first under the car specialist to offer you a guarantee on all these parts for as long as you own your car. I love wings. I love wings so much that I wanted to join the Air Force just to be near them. Then I found out the best place to be near great wings is O'Toole's. And the best time is Tuesday wing night. Every Tuesday is wing night at O'Toole's. And the wings are the best. Mild, medium, hot, or suicide. Even honey garlic. Great wings, great prices, and great times with my good friends. 
That's why every Tuesday I march right over to Old Tools, where I've really earned my wings. Because if there's one thing I love, it's wings. And Tuesdays at O'Toole's. Well, I guess that's two things. Did I mention I like wings? The right-hander, Steve Olin, coming on to work here. Fans getting a big kick out of the Jumbotron and uh, some of the highlights or lowlights, depending on how you view it. Olin is making his 19th appearance. He's 1-2 and two with a 2.64 ERA. George Bell is up there to welcome him into the ballgame. Thank you, Tom. Bell digs in. Listen to this crowd. Olin pitch, swing, and a miss, strike one. Bell is 0 for 3. He has had 3,921 at-bats in his big league career without a sacrifice bunt. It was just about two weeks ago, Cito Gaston said, I thought about it in the ninth inning, but decided not to. Here's your 97 RBI man. 1-1 one, one the score. Bottom of the eighth inning. Nobody out. The runners lead at first and second. Olin kicks, deals, and he's low and outside. One and one. George hitting 296. He's had an MVP-like year. 18 home runs. Fred McGriff on deck. The stretch. A second look at the bag. Here's the pitch. Ground ball weakly hit to third. Glove by Jacoby. Double pumps to second one. That's all they get as Mookie comes down to third. Brooke Jacoby could not get that ball out of his glove. He had to short hop it on the turf. So they end up with one, not two. And with McGriff coming up and Jesse Orozco in the bullpen, the left-hander, here comes manager John Hart to tap his left elbow, and he wants Orozco into the game. And it will be Orozco's job to try and induce McGriff to hit a ball on the ground where a double play would take Cleveland off the field. The Blue Jays are run, seven hits and two errors. The Indians are run, five hits and two errors. And Tom... One thing you have to say about Cleveland, they lost three of four over in Cleveland to the Blue Jays. They've lost two straight here. But they have given the Blue Jays all they can handle here in this month of September. Well, the Blue Jays and the Indians, on the whole, have played, I guess, about as entertaining a series of baseball this year as any club that the Blue Jays have been involved with. Jesse Orozco comes on for his 63rd appearance. Oh, they are getting their mileage out of Jesse. One and four, three saves, 2.05 ERA. Don't forget, after today's broadcast and baseball today with Scott Ferguson when he'll give you all the news behind the scores, over at Sightlines, Bob McCowan will be on, of course, with Jay's Talk, and his special guest today will be George Bell. A couple more warm-up tosses to Skinner, and we'll be ready. Well, that was the final one right there. So up comes Fred McGriff. Now, here we go. These two, Orozco and McGriff, have met three times over the last week and a half. Twice over in Cleveland when Orozco walked him. And then another time, McGriff tried to bunt, fouled two off, and then whacked the ball on the ground to second into a double play. And then they met yesterday when Orozco struck him out. One to one the score, bottom of the eighth inning. The Blue Jays and Indians, Mookie Wilson at third, George Bell at first. And with one out, McGriff up here, one for three today, a single to right. The left hand of the stretch. He kicks, deals, and a curve is in. Strike one called, as noted by the veteran plate umpire Jim McKean. Fred hitting 280. 36 home runs to lead the leg. 88 runs batted in. The outfield deep and straight away. The stretch. Strike one pitch. Curve. Strike two. Call. Great pitch. McGriff did a deep knee bend. Started to do the limbo to move out of the way. And that ball snapped back in to catch the inner portion of the plate. That's a murderous pitch. A left-hander to a left-handed hitter. The strike two pitch curved just outside. He almost caught it. One ball and two strikes. 
course, Mookie looking for a fly ball to tag up on and break the tie. He'll be coming home on the ball hit on the ground. Bells at first, held on by O'Brien. The stretch. The one-two pitch, fastball, and top foul past first base coach Mike Squires, who picks it up on a bounce. Flips it to Ken Kaiser, and the umpire will toss it out of play. It remains one and two on McGriff. On deck, right-handed hitting Ozzy Virgil. Rich, yet the right-hander, is ready if needed in the Cleveland pen. So Roscoe might be here just to try and solve McGriff. He takes the glove to the waist. The one-two pitch. Curve is outside. Two and two. Ready? Trying to protect that plate. Roscoe's had his share of success over his career. Most notably with the 86 world champion New York Mets. He's bent over reading the sign from Skinner. Now he straightens up. 2-2 Two -two pitch on the way. Curve, strike three called on the inside corner. A wonderful bit of pitching by Jesse Orozco. When you strike out Fred McGriff, you've earned it. Two down. And here comes Mark Wiley, the pitching coach. Virgil's coming up. Yet will remain in the bullpen. Wiley wants to talk about pitching to Virgil here in this bottom of the eighth inning. Virgil 0 for 3. Ozzie, the designated hitter. Hitting 222 as a Blue Jay. The runners lead at first and third. Orozco kicks and deals, and a curveball is high. Ball one. The curveball in for a strike, and it's one and one. Virgil, longtime National Leaguer with the Phillies and Braves, so he's had his share of at bats against Orozco. The stretch again. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Fastball popped up down the right field line in foul ground. Down the line, second baseman Tommy Henzo reaches out, makes the catch as he falls to the turf and bounces up with a ball in his glove. As Virgil fouls out down the right field line, a fine catch by little Tommy Henzo. So the Blue Jays get two leadoff singles and cannot bring them around.